welcome back. So today we're actually going to be looking over the fire staff. Now what I want to do here is I actually want to give you an insight on to what these skills look like on the fire staff in case you're wondering if it's a, a weapon you want to go with, how they work, so on and so forth. We're going to go through the fire mage first and then I'm going to go through the pyromancer. I decided to go ahead and do it at level 16 because all the passives that I do not have yet for the fire mage or that I would have set on my pyromancer, I can just explain to you because they are just passives. There's no visual, it can just be an explanatory breakdown. Now I am also in an area that is my level, so what you're gonna be seeing is like actively how this works and how it affects the things that you will be facing at your level once you have these things unlocked. Also, of course, to start off with, now after a certain level with your weapon mastery, it does cost to respect. And this is another reason why I'm doing this. So you don't have to spend the points to respect. In order for me to respect my staff, which I will do for you guys to show you the pyromancy side, after I'm done showing you the fire mage, it will cost me a hundred, and I'm gonna have to a hundred azoth. I'm sorry, then I'm gonna have to spend another hundred to sp to spend it back to fire mage because I prefer to run fire mage. But I'm gonna talk about both of them. We're gonna start with fire mage, and I'm gonna go over the skills. Now, all of your skills can be set. If you click on it, you can select which one goes to Q, which one goes to R, and which goes to F. Simple as that. You can, as you can see, have points spread out between them. You can hybrid build. I recommend when you're starting out that you just do the singular line so you can get a real good feel for it. And then, you know, if you want a hybrid, you can after that. Hopefully this video will help you decide if you actually want to do that. So we're going to start by showing you Pillar of Fire. Now I'm going to go over what they do, explain them a little bit, and I'm going to show you them in action. So it's a targeted spell, meaning you hold it down and you select where you want to lay it out. Now it does 134% 134% weapon damage, but there is something that this breakdown doesn't tell you, and of course it costs 15 mana. And the passive that's on it right now is it does 40% more damage to foes at full health, and... Arson's Advantage gains 10% of your max mana per enemy hit by Pillar of Fire. So, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to find a Zombo. But first, before I do that, let me show you how you activate this. So I would hit Q and you can see the ring. That's where it would explode at. There's an explosion right there in the center where my character is and on the outside of the ring as well. Now what the skill does not tell you is that you, the enemy takes damage in the center of the ring and it also pushes them towards the outside. If the enemy stumbles fast enough to the outside of the ring, they will take additional damage. I was trying to figure this out for a while because it kept showing that damage take, hitting twice and I didn't understand why. On top of that, with this, you can set it up to where they do take additional damage, but it's kind of hard because you're trying to guess which way they're gonna roll. And if they try to run through it, straight through it, it's gonna just, it's gonna do additional damage. So we're gonna start it over here. I'm going to try and set him in the center. Boom. He got pushed, but it did not... It didn't push him all the way to the outside. So he didn't take that additional damage. Alright. So our next skill, I'm not actually going to... Well, yeah, I will show this to you on an, an enemy. Simply because you can see it, and I want you to see how it ticks and how it affects and how it reacts. Um, this particular skill, I don't use a lot in the open world because you sit there... And you cast it so this is meteor shower and just like any other MMO or any other game where they have a meteor shower you're dropping fireballs out of the sky I have none of the passive set up on this yet because I don't use them proact I don't use the skill proactively that often outside unless I'm running with someone who can pull aggro off of me otherwise you will typically get knocked out of it or you would just consistently take damage um, the passes are immolation the initial hit of Meteor Shower gives you 1% of your max mana for each target hit. Now that max mana that you keep seeing, pay attention to that because Fire Mage is heavy about that. Fire Mage is heavy about max ma or, yep, your max mana coming back and you doing burns off of crits. And I'll talk more about burns off of crits here in a second. The next one is Fairy Determination. Adds Grit while casting a Meteor. Grit is an added stagger resistant that stops attacks from from being interrupted by reaction. So basically what this is talking about is while you're casting it, it's harder for them to just knock you out of it. And the last passive on this is Judgment of Helios. All hits after the initial impact now deal 25% weapon damage. All right, so let's see how this looks. 
I want, I could see that alligator right there, but I want to cast it on someone that's on land so you can see the whole hit. Now, just like your Q, it does have a ring set up. So that, that ring that you see is the entire area of where it hits. All right, but it, you can't cast it that far away from you. That's the only downside. Now I have used this in PVP and it is pretty good with that. If you're not doing a 1v1. If you're doing a 1v1, then it's a little different. Now you might be noticing while I'm doing this, while I'm doing my heavy attacks, you don't see my mana dropping at all. And remember, I said that this this skill tree deals a lot with mana regen. So I'm going to go ahead and explain that right now before I go any further. So spell focus is a, is a skill I took really early on. After I unlocked these three skills, I went straight to spell focus. You can go in whatever order you want, guys. What it does is my heavy attacks restore 5% of my max mana on hit. So every time I use a heavy attack, it's restoring my mana. Now further down the skill tree, you have Spell Slinger. Your abilities gain an extra 15% chance to critical strike. Remember I said mana regen and crits, and we'll get back to why that is important. Right here, Flare. Heavy attacks no longer consume mana. So Flare and Spell Focus go hand in hand. Now not only do my heavy attacks restore mana, giving me a 5% mana regen, but then now they no longer take mana to even do. So I'm not losing any mana to cast my heavy attack, I'm only gaining. So every time I throw out a spell and I'm just heavy attack, heavy attack, heavy attack, I'm just regaining mana. It's just nothing but regen. Now this crit, the spell slinger. One thing that we want to look at next is Singe. And this is insane. When you get a critical hit with Fire Stab, cause burning dealing 3% weapon damage each second for three seconds I'm sorry for six seconds my apologies now with spell slinger all your abilities gain an extra 15% chance to critical strike that means that you can get a crit off of everything that you're doing not only your heavy attacks not only your uh, light attacks but every single spell that you cast and that is insane. So every spell that I cast can crit and every crit that I do does burn, which does 3% of my weapon damage for six seconds. And those burns do stack. I'll try to show you what that looks like. But before I do that, I'm gonna talk about the next skill because this next skill directly applies a burn. So it's Fireball, your normal fire mage cast. Boom, Fireball. You fire off a heavy fireball that deals 140% weapon damage on impact and leaves a three meter burning field that lasts six seconds. The burning field deals 10% of your weapon damage each second. That's for six seconds. And of course the passive, the field persists for nine seconds instead. And the last passive catch, direct hits with your fireball give you a 10% of your max mana back and reduces your fire staff cooldown by 7%. So that's all your cooldowns. Now, if you've been watching and you've seen that thing that's appearing beneath me every uh, uh, when I cast spells from time to time, it's runes of it's the runes of Helios. Whenever I cast a spell, it places a two meter rune on the ground, increasing all of my spell damage by 30% while standing on the rune. It lasts for seven seconds as long as I'm standing on the rune. Any spell I cast while standing there gets that increase, gets that bump up. So let's look at Fireball and let's see these these burns stack. Let's see what we got out here. Because I don't want to get the one thing that make that is difficult about playing a ranged weapon as your primary damage. If you're playing solo, you will get jumped on. So your your dodges got to be on point. So we're gonna throw the fireball out. You'll see it hit them. He has two burns on top of him. The first burn was from the fireball on the floor. That burn right there is because it crit. So that didn't crit. No burn. See that emblem above his head, the little fireball? He's burning because it crit off of a heavy attack. All right, so in conclusion with the fire mage part of this, you got your pillar of fire, which remember is that big circle, does damage in the center, does damage on the outer rings. If, you, if they try to run through it, they will get hit twice. If you can bounce them to the outer rings, it'll hit them twice as well, doing double the damage. And then you got Meteor that casts in the same exact way. You got your rune right here, so as long as I'm standing in this rune, I get empowered. Well, it's not empowering, but I get that bonus. And then you got your Fireball. That glitches sometimes, it didn't even make the explosion. I'll wait for the 12 second cooldown to go off, but that does happen, so don't be shocked if that happens, guys. It is a thing that happens. 
So we're going to try this again. And you got your fireball. There's the burning field, and if I had hit them directly, it would have taken... Now, also, I want to make a point here. You can hit them square in the chest with fireball. Sometimes it will glitch and go through them, but you can hit them square in the chest with fireball, and it will still leave the, the flame on the ground. It doesn't just negate that. It still leaves the flame on the ground. I will try to give you guys a show of that right here with this guy, and then I'm going to reset my skill tree and show you the pyro skill tree. See? Hit him straight in the chest. And it simply burn the ground all right so now I'm gonna respect for you guys the last thing I want to touch on on the fire mage is that is the clear mind passive while above 50% mana you gain 10% in power all in power does is it makes your attacks hit harder and you will see it above your health and your mana bar it's like a little fist that's all it is but other than the Fire Mage, we're going to jump right over to Pyromancer. Sorry, I forgot to cover that, so I'm just going over it real quick right now. That is all this does. And then we're going to do Pyromancer. So I'm just going to put it on these three right now. Just these three. So I can show them to you. So Flamethrower, create a jet of flame from the tip of your staff, dealing 34% weapon damage each second, each hit. Catches enemies on fire, dealing 3% of weapon damage each second for 6 seconds. It costs 5 mana per second. Now, this skill tree does have some regen in it, but it's not primarily about that. Incinerate. Causes a fairy explosion, dealing 130% weapon damage, and pushes all enemies 3 meters back. Catches enemies on fire, dealing 3% of weapon damage each second for 6 seconds. And Burnout. This one's the really fun. Dash through targets dealing 129% weapon damage on hit. Passing through a target will catch the target on fire applying burn that deals 10% weapon damage each second for 8 seconds. Now as you can tell these two different uh, skill trees are very wildly different based on just their skills. And again remember you can set them however you want over here. And they pair better with different weapons. So this one is a more in your face. I'm going to show you incinerate first simply because it's the easiest one to, to, to show off and all it does is make a simple explosion around you and if anybody's too close to you they're in your face so this is more for PvP and you can use it for PvE if you just get mobbed but if they're in your face you can just boom and it pushes them back. The next one is going to be the flamethrower and it is exactly how it sounds guys. It's a flamethrower right you hold it down you lose mana as you do it. And you can you can actually just tap it to let it go. Next is gonna be burnout or dash. That's it right there. So those are the three primary skills for that. Now let's look at their passives. So flamethrower has a distance gain passive. So increase the range of flamethrower by 50%. Boom. Increase the base damage of flamethrower by 25%. Boom boom. And flamethrower has no cooldown. Wild, right? We're gonna commit those three points. Now let's look at how long Flamethrower is now. Now I do want to show you the damage I put on Flamethrower because you can just walk back with this. You can you can ignite someone with it and then just walk back with it. So you can just backtrack while you're while you're damaging them. And Flamethrower does crit, by the way. It does crit. Now he has 10 stacks of burning on him. Look at that. And now my flamethrower has no cooldown. I can just go for it again. So it's basically the flavor that you want with your with your fire staff. That's really all it amounts to. Now let's look at incinerate. Each hit of incinerate causes an additional stack of burning. Restore 20% of incinerate damage dealt as health. And then incinerate hits twice. So we're gonna commit those three points. We're gonna run up to this guy. Actually, I'm gonna aggro one other person. This might aggro two people. But we'll see. Alright, because I want to push them both off. Right? Let them get close. Boom. Both pushed off, both burning. Now, if I want to, I can just walk it back. Just walk it back. And you're just laying down so much damage just by doing that. Now, the thing is, with this particular skill line, you're going to want to have some good constitution. Mine isn't that bad, but it's not that good. If I got crowded by, if that floating electric gentleman up there 
had came to me while I was fighting them, odds are I would have died right there. I could have dashed out though, but I would have died. Speaking of which, burnout all in. Fire stuff cooldowns are now reduced by 5% for each foe hit by burnout. Burnout goes 50% further. All right. Now I'm going to talk about some of these passives because I'm not going to activate them because these these things aren't really going to be seen that well. It's just something that you'll notice. Um, so when you block a melee attack, you re restore 5% of your max mana. So there's the mana regen in this skill tree. Um, burning lasts 20% longer. Trial by fire. When you are struck, create a field of fire around you, dealing 5% weapon damage to all nearby enemies in a 4 meter radius. Activates when struck in battle and lasts for 10 seconds. So as you can see, this skill tree really goes well with, say, you want to do like a heavy hitter weapon or you just want to be up close and personal. Now, I would typically, if I was going to use that skill tree, I would pair it with my rapier or I would probably pair it with one of these guys. Now, the issue here, though, is your attribute scaling because those two do not scale with intelligence and the rapier scales with intelligence and dexterity. So it's a tricky, it's a tricky combination. You could have this that set up for um, you could have this up to do your burn ticks and then have your primary damage be your heavier weapons. It's up to you. But this is pretty much how that looks. And just like you have the runes of Helios over here, reheat. After six seconds without activating a fire staff ability, your minor regen is increased by 400 percent So as you can see, the right side pyromancer is more about tick damage, burning, and just dropping as quickly as you can while you are doing some sort of up close. And then it, you can get out with burnout if you need to. You might not need to. But I'm going to just burn all my skills here and see about how fast this actually does the, the mana regen. So we're just going to burn them, burn them, burn them, burn them, burn them, hit Q. I'm going to run through them. You see how fast my mana's going back up? So those are the primary differences between the two skill trees on the fire staff, the fire mage and the pyromancer. I was going to wait until my fire staff hit completely at 20 and then I realized I didn't really need to because the understanding was there with and I had gone through both trees playing them both and I figured out, you know, what the differences were and how they really worked. Hitting 20 is more so to get everything unlocked how you want to build. Now again, you can build hybrid, but I recommend trying them out first before you decide to do that. That's my recommendation. You can play however you want. But I hope this was informative and fun for you guys. If you have another weapon you would like me to do to showcase, let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to go over it and level up a weapon even if I don't have it leveled yet. Just so you guys can kind of get a firm understanding of it. Anyway, I hope you all are enjoying the game. Have a great day, morning, noon, or night, whatever it is, wherever you are. And I hope to see you guys in the next video.